Good morning. Oh, good morning. You're out there. You're living. You're breathing. You are people. It's wonderful, isn't it, to see each other face to face. Good morning and welcome to our service at St. Paul's. For those of you uh, who are watching this recording later on, a very good morning to you. The sun is shining. I haven't yet managed to poke my head out the door. Is it cold this morning? Is it a bit cold duck or is it just nice and fresh? Oh, you need a woolly on. You need a woolly on. Yeah, so anyway, it's beautiful, isn't it? To see the sun shining, glistening on the leaves. It just lifts your heart, doesn't it? Shall we take just a moment, just bring ourselves into this space where we can come, we can open our hearts and our minds to a living Lord Jesus who will be with us throughout everything we go through. Let's just bring all that's gone before this morning, put it to one side there, and then we've got that beautiful space to worship God. Helps if you go the right way. As I've said before, laptops always keep me humble. And just as you sit quietly, a song to listen to. I don't know about you, but I'm really appreciating, I will appreciate the time when we can sing like the rest of us, but actually just to read the words and just to let the tune dwell within us, sometimes that's uh, all that we need, isn't it? So as we hold a moment's silence, as we bring who we are this morning and all that we will be to our almighty God. Give us now a sense, Lord, of your presence as we bring our prayers and our requests to you and enable us to open our hearts and minds to you. And as we open our hearts and minds, we're at that part in our service where we say sorry to God. So now let us confess our sins to God and ask 
for his forgiveness for all the wrong things we have done. In your mercy, forgive us, Lord, for forgetting what we ought to have remembered, for failing to do as we have promised, for turning away when we should have listened, for being careless when we should have been diligent. In your mercy, Forgive us, Lord. For doing things we knew would annoy, for acting in ways we knew would hurt, for behaving in ways we knew would disappoint. Together, in your mercy, forgive us, Lord. O God, when we look back, we can see how foolish and wrong we have been. Forgive us and help us not to do the same things again. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we bring all our sorrows to God, we have the blessed assurance that we receive his forgiveness. So may the God who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgiving us our sins and making us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, we stand on the rock of our faith, Jesus, confident that we are a forgiven people because we continue to walk in faith and hope. Amen. And Jeff is going to bring God's word to us. Mr. Ball, oh, oh yes. So before our reading that Jeff is going to speak to us, let's just say goodbye to these little bodies here. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the ministry of these young minds and we pray that each and every one of them will indeed as they grow know more and more of you and just want you to be in their lives as their lifelong friend amen yes Our uh, Bible reading, and out of interest, you, that you might appreciate that uh, in the lectionary that we uh, that we use, um, there is a number of readings, um, and I chose this one partly, and uh, a certain rector who would, was here some time ago was saying, yeah, "I was going to be very random, and I am. I was um, influenced by this book, which is called." Love Never Ends, Reflections for Holy Week. Um, and there's this stuff here that, that sort of got me thinking. Now, our reading from Acts, Acts chapter 8. And uh, if we carry on with this masks and sitting at two metres apart, why not shove a, a little New Testament in your pocket so you can follow? Because if you're anything like me, once the words have disappeared, uh, they've disappeared out of your head. Acts chapter 8. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out. And on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, 
an important officer in charge of all the treasury of Candace, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit, of, the spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near it. And then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And this is the passage of scripture that the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from the earth? <clears throat> the eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very scripture, uh, the very passage of scripture, and told him the good news of Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What can stand in the way of me being baptised? And he gave orders for the stop to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptised him. And they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. However, Philip appeared in Azotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Now I'm going to hop back a bit and leave it there. Um, yes, this book. On the back page, on the back cover are these words. And remember it was written for Easter week, for, for Good Friday. On this day we have seen it all. Everything dies. Life dies, death dies. Everything is done, except love. Only love is not a done. Only love will not die. Everything is finished, except love. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. At some point, everything will be done, except love. Love is never done. And... My first notes put the word conversations. And throughout, especially the New Testament, there are these conversations between people wanting to know. Wanting to know, because uh, as Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. If we come, Forgive me if we came this morning full of our own importance, thinking we were going to uh, be generous to God and give him our time. We cannot receive anything that he wishes to give us. Okay, our story from Acts. The central characters, I guess you've seen, are Philip from Bathsheba and one of the first, first disciples. You remember... He went to his brother, his friend, and said, come on, we've met, we found Jesus. We found the saviour of the world. And Nathaniel laughed at him and said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And we don't know his name, but he was clearly an important official from Ethiopia. And we shouldn't forget Luke. Luke, who compiled the Gospel of Luke and compiled 
I must have done a lot of walking around and asking and talking to people and listening to their stories when he wrote the book of Acts, the, the account of the growing church. And it would probably help to be reminded of the, of the overall picture that we shouldn't forget. And excuse my nose. You'll remember that after the day of Pentecost, how many, many people came to believe in the Lord Jesus. And they came together and they shared what they got, got uh, food and, uh, and money and, and, and such like. Uh, and it was a, a growing, delightful, embryonic church. Which the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the leaders did not like. And they arrested Stephen. And Stephen, if you read his story in Acts, gave a most stirring account and told the Pharisees of their, of their disobedience and how they turned their back really on God. And these were the people who, who saw themselves as, as God's representative to the Jews. And how Stephen was stoned. And how one called Saul watched it and approved of what went on. And how persecution followed. Christians fled from Jerusalem. Many were put in prison. And I imagine many beaten and killed. But we don't know that. Saul so incensed. And probably other things going on inside him that he couldn't account for was so incensed at what Stephen said in his speech, he set out to stamp out all these followers of Jesus. So, Philip went north to Samaria to tell the story of Jesus. And this is where I'm going to be a bit random. Sorry, Brian. Um, you remember how Jesus went to Samaria he didn't go the long way round by the Jordan. He went straight through the bit of land that the Jews didn't approve of. They didn't approve of the Samaritans. And he had a conversation with a very dubious lady at a well when it was hot. And how that conversation helped her to believe in him and how her conversation with the townspeople who probably shunned her and turned away in public um, came and met Jesus and believed in him these people who Jesus who the Jews considered inferior Jesus welcomed into his kingdom and also a bit more of randomness <clears throat> that uh, caught my imagination you'll know the story of the newly risen Christ walking along with two disciples on the Emmaus Road when he asked them what they were discussing, one of them, named Cleopas, spoke and told him, well, I'm the other one. If I told you my name, it wouldn't mean anything to you. When, years later, they told Luke the story, they remembered Cleopas but forgot me. Not surprising, really. I never went on a missionary journey or founded a church. I kept my head down in the persecution. In the world's eye, I was a nobody. So, I remember with humble amazement that the eternal word of God, for whom and by whom all things were made, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the Saviour of all humankind, chose to spend several hours trudging along a dusty road, patiently explaining it all to Cleopas and me. Which brings us back to Philip, probably running along a dusty road by a chariot. Um, but, uh, sorry about my nose, I've got to attend to it again. You'll remember I said that uh, Philip was uh, north of Jerusalem in Samaria. And he was told to go south. 
many miles south on the road, the, the trade route, I imagine, that goes to Egypt and on to Africa. And you might think that uh, Luke was elaborating a little bit. It happened by lucky coincidence that he met a court official, the one who oversaw the money of the court of uh, the Queen of Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopia. I'm going to say a lucky coincidence, no. And I hope that some of you sitting there will say, no. If we're willing, and sometimes it takes a lot of bending to be willing to submit to the guidance of God, God's coincidences happen. Great things, good things can happen. And a very a brief account of me. If you want to know the whole story, it'll cost you a cup of a, it will cost you a cup of coffee. One sugar, please. Now, as you can probably tell by my accent, I'm a fen man from Lincolnshire, and I grew up in a place called Holbeach, where there's one set of traffic lights, and that's about it. And at about 19 or 20, and I can't remember when, I went to work in Cambridge. And a few months into that job, I was called into the office. I worked at the College of Art and Technology looking after tape recorders. Um, no, I shouldn't go into that side of things. I was called into the office and there was an urgent message for me that was nothing to do with work. And to be honest, it was a situation I was too immature to handle. It was a request to do something that I didn't want to do. Now, it so happened that the departmental secretary was in that office and saw by the look on my face how perplexed and disturbed I was. And uh, being a motherly soul and a wise woman, she said, sit down and talk. And I did as I was told. And after a few questions, she said to me, would you like me to sort this out? Gosh, you don't know how it felt inside. So, without asking the head of department, she got a coat and went and sorted things out. Doing something that I was totally unable to do. And not only did she sort things out, because her student had left, she offered me her spare room with her family. And I tell you, I was living in a grotty bed sit and to move into a place that was warm, where there was a bath, and where I could uh, cook in a little kitchen, was fantastic. But before that, I had to admit that there was a need that I couldn't handle, a need that I had to say to God, and say to God regularly over the years, Life isn't a nice little step along the Christian road. It's got some serious dips if you don't listen and don't pay attention and don't do as you're told. And often I admit I've been very foolish and silly, not listening and obeying to God. So, back to our Philip. Passing the time of day with the Chancellor of the Exchequer of Ethiopia. <clears throat> now, and don't let your mind run away from, uh, into other thoughts. In the East, eunuchs were uh, valued as being especially trustworthy. Hence, his pretty important position in the royal court. But it did mean, because he was a eunuch, that he could not be accepted into the Jewish faith. He'd been to Jerusalem to worship. And I imagine, <clears throat> excuse me, I imagine he'd paid quite a bit of money for the uh, part of the manuscript, the scroll that he had um, bought and was reading. A man who, despite his status, was looking for answers. Something 
to satisfy him inside that he couldn't put words into. I guess he was dissatisfied with whatever the uh, religious observances and rituals were part of the Ethiopian country and the other African countries round about. And maybe he hoped that in Jerusalem, in the worship of the temple, which he must have heard about, there would be something to answer that deep, indescribable need. Now, I started talking about the central characters in the story, and that's true, but it's these incredible words that have left upon the screen from Scripture that affected the reader, that he must have read and reread. And I guess I note that he would be a man of, <coughs> sorry. a man of learning, a man of education, um, to, re to, to be able to read and to, to try and fathom out what he was reading. And I want to say that such words were more than words on a manuscript. They moved from the page, in a sense they moved from the page, into his mind, into his heart, into his thoughts, with, with powerful effect. He wanted to know what he was reading. And I hope, and I hope that you too, when you sat and read scripture, have found words that move from the page and become a living, vital word in your heart and mind. <clears throat> so in a sense, the star of our reading is this passage from Isaiah, a book that uh, you need to sit and read a little bit at a time from the beginning where Isaiah is very, very critical of the idolatry and the wickedness and the, the failure to, to obey God's command to the children of Israel, warning them of what would happen if they refused to follow God's commands and the plan he had for them. And then towards the middle it changes. Changes to the hope that we've read round about this chapter. Go home, read it. <clears throat> so, Philip, the Bible says, began with this very scripture, this passage of scripture, and told him the good news about Jesus. You see, he might have been a nobody as far as the Jews were concerned because of his physical condition. But here, this Chancellor of the Exchequer, this Ethiopian, was wanting to be baptised, wanting to accept Christ as his saviour. Perhaps he wasn't good enough to become a God-fearing uh, proselyte, a, G a Gentile in the Jewish faith. But the end of our story says he went on his way rejoicing what had happened to him in his conversation with Philip, with Philip had changed his whole outlook on who he was and what, where he was going. He was assured of his place in heaven. So maybe you need to think about being a Philip, listening, and listening is the important bit, telling your story to somebody who considers themselves to be insignificant, who isn't that important. Or maybe it helps to know us who are not perfect, who haven't come here because we're full of everything and, and, and feel that um, God owes us something, but in need, because we have and are vulnerable in the society and in the situation we're going on, know what it means to be blessed of the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
And I guess there are people, yes, there are people who are fortunate out there who consider themselves self-sufficient, who have got enough um, cash uh, saved such that they can carry on living, but there are some who are desperate for work, who have lost their benefit, who have lost so much. And I suppose if we're not vulnerable, then how can we accept that which God has to give us? Without the love of God to, uh, and the love that we give to others, we need, we're not loners. Um, somebody described uh, eight o'clock communion in a certain church as individuals hiding behind the pillar, the pillars that were in this particular church, um, making their communion of, with God. They weren't part of the, of the family, the sheep who needed a shepherd. And I hope we are not like that. We need one another. We need to be the sheep belonging to the flock of the good shepherd. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as lamb before its shearers is silent so he did not open his mouth in his humiliation he was deprived of justice who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth and yet because of that love never dies amen Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, just before we listen to our next song, I, I like to make a few notes, you know. I don't know whether you've seen me at all when um, we have uh, different people doing sermons and uh, I take them home with me and I look at them again. And you made me think about this morning, Jeff, those people that first spoke about Jesus to me. And I was eight years old and nothing happened. You know, I know you know the story, but nothing happened for me until I joined in until I watered that seed that had been planted at eight and I was 32 and then I was able to tell people about Jesus and I think that is um, what Jeff was ending with this morning who and so it made me think who was the first person that spoke about Jesus to me and how many times in a day do we speak Jesus to other people because as Jeff quite rightly says Jesus changes our whole outlook on our lives doesn't he and it's our duty and our joy to actually make sure that people know the Jesus that we love and because of that our love never dies thank you Jeff for this morning And now we're going to listen to our next song. Thanks, Lynn. Perfect.
healing. Thank you. This morning, for our prayers, I don't know about you, but I have to really make a, a real effort to be quiet. Uh, there's so many things running through my mind, and um, I'm sure it's the same for all of us in one form or another. So this morning, just for a couple of minutes, you know what you need to bring to the Lord this morning. Now, that may be someone or a situation that you want to bring. And what I'd like to do, picking up on a bit more of Jeff's sermon, I'm going to leave us for a few moments to sit in silence, to say what you have to say to God, and then maybe in that silence there will be a response because sometimes we're so full of the world and the happenings and the situations that it can be really difficult to hear what God is saying. So let's take that opportunity now. And Heavenly Father, we do bring to you 
all the people we have brought into this space this morning. We bring to you the many situations that are happening in all of our lives. Lord, we pray your presence and your healing into our lives and to all those that we love and care for. We pray for your love to grow in all those places of conflict and we particularly remember this morning all that is happening in India. Lord, there are so many places we could name this morning, but we are confident that your hand is upon all of those situations and we pray for all those leaders of all those nations to allow your love to grow in their hearts and the hearts of the people. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. And I call it for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. For those you have brought for this situations that you have brought, we bind up all our prayers together as we say, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we come to our notices this morning and I have just uh, I have a couple of things to say first of all very importantly for those of you that know Vera Lowton she has now moved to down the road down on Burton Rose to Willowbrook I believe it is I've got some nods so that's good um, so Vera is in Willowbrook now uh, and we'll please hold her in your prayers we um, we are in need of we have to, we have had two very faithful first aiders uh, Margaret Bowler and Phil Walker and both have stepped down uh, and quite rightly too we need to give someone else a chance so we're looking for two first aiders please two qualified first aiders that is so you, you know you need to have a certificate if you feel some jelly in your belly and you'd like to do that and you haven't got a certificate i know a man who can help us to to help us to sort that out so please do see me after the service or maybe liz as i'll be dashing off to do live uh, so please do um if you feel that nudge uh, that's part of being the body of christ this is your gifting to the body of jesus so do let us no, if you feel a, I could do that. You need to be obedient and step up, she says. What else have I got to say? Um, ah, we've got birthdays this coming week. We have, well, we have Dorothy's today, the very day. So it's happy birthday to Dorothy. We have, yeah, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute wait one moment i know you want to clap and we are going to clap we could even woo behind our masks we're not going to be able to sing but we will be able to clap so we've got dorothy to today happy birthday dorothy we've got uh, on tuesday we've got the lovely christine johnson's birthday uh, and uh, how many will you be christine is it 92 is she 92 now 92 isn't it yeah 92 years old 91 91 well 91 so all sounds good to me so dorothy today christine johnson and we've also got jades on thursday as well jade's in there isn't she can somebody remind me that we need to clap for jade when they come back in please thank you so let's shall we give birthday people a wave first you happy birthday good people happy birthday enjoy your days and let's give them all a big round of applause we hope you have lovely days Tuesday as well is it oh birthdays all round another clap for Pam happy birthday Pam <laughs> lovely any other notices I need to be aware of before we ask for God's blessing upon us the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and all those you maybe still cannot see at this moment in time. May the Lord be gracious to you and bring you his peace. And we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, we ought to have that back. This is the end of our service. Please leave as you have been doing very, very well, I might add. Another round of applause for the way you go out of the building. Please do that. Dorothy is actually going to um, help you go out of the door. And uh, can I wish you a really lovely day. Enjoy the sunshine. And I'm going to dash off and do live so please do have a great day go in peace to love 
and serve the Lord. Amen.